It's time to tie a bow on that Preptober planning and get ready to dive in to NaNoWriMo. Hello everyone, it's Alana. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with me today. And if you are new here, welcome, welcome. It's almost time, you guys. NaNoWriMo is just right around the corner and I am so stoked. But we are back again today with my Preptober slash NaNoWriMo planner for a couple of reasons. The last video that I did with this, and in case you missed it, I do have a playlist up on my channel featuring my Preptober content and NaNoWriMo preparedness. I will link it down in the description below. I just walked through through the setup and process of this planner. But since then, I have received numerous questions and inquiries about a few things that were in here. So we're gonna quickly cover those in this video and then stick around because at the end, I am going to be talking to you guys just a little bit about story structure and my NaNoWriMo writing method. I did post a video up on my channel last week where we sat down face-to-face -face and talked about some of these things, but Let's just say recovering from dental surgery, Alana should have not sat down and made that video. If you were one of the 73 people who saw it before I pulled it, I apologize. It was entirely incoherent and I have a certain standard for myself and my content and I was not happy with it so I pulled it. We're going to be talking about a few things that I did bring up in that video but a little bit more brief and a little bit more concise and hopefully helpful and understandable for you guys. So really quick, this is my Preptober slash NaNoWriMo planner. It's just an A5 binder that I purchased on clearance off of Amazon, decorated it with some stickers that I already had. And I create this every year or one like it just to kind of hold all of my Preptober and NaNoWriMo things in one place and to keep track of what's going on. I have a busy life. I'm a housewife and homeschool mama and content creator. So I need to stay on top of things and that requires good planning. So inside cover, nothing has changed. So we'll just skip over that really quick and go to my November calendar. So as you can see, I updated this. I added in the word counts of where I should be every single day thereabouts to hit the 50,000 word target at the end of the month. Now I personally do this on paper that I do believe that the NaNoWriMo website itself offers this digitally. For me, it works better if I do this on paper. I personally don't participate in the online side of NaNoWriMo and I no longer utilize their website. Don't get me wrong, it's an incredible tool and I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to participate in NaNoWriMo. But for me and for my anxiety, it just, it works better if I do it on paper. That That's really the only reason that I don't participate in their online like tracking and buddy system and all of that, just to keep my anxiety level under control. And I already have so much going on. It just works best for me to do it on paper. Um, and then I also like to do this so that I know where I need to be so that I don't count on being ahead and then unintentionally fall behind. Because as a NaNoWriMo newbie, I thought by day four, if I had 9,000 words, I was way ahead and could take a little bit of time off or do something else or not worry about it. And then I would come back far behind. <laughs> so it's best to see where I need to be and track it this way. So, oh, and then I am going to, when NaNoWriMo begins and I start the writing, I'm going to draw a line underneath each day and write what my actual word count is. And hopefully they match at least closely to all of the numbers already there. Next, we have my morning and nightly routine. I also did kind of late afternoon, evening in there as well. This is for weekdays because I am a homeschool mama and I have to school my kids. So as you can see, I don't have a ton of writing time, which is why I need to be super careful and meticulous and well planned out when it comes to my plans and my process for reaching my goals. Weekends are going to be a little bit easier, a little bit more flexible. I will be able to find more writing time. And then I'm also going to do a couple of days a week where I will burn the midnight oil and have late night writes. So 
let's stop here really quick on this portion of my planning. This is one of the things that I talked about in that face-to-face -face video, and I'll just cover it for you guys really quickly. One tip that I recommend, and you don't have to do this, you can take it or throw it out, um, but this works really great for me, and if you wanna give it a try, I highly recommend it, and that is scheduling social media. So when I'm participating in NaNoWriMo, for the whole month of November, and I try to do this most years, a couple of years I haven't because I had a lot of other things going on and I was a rep for a planner brand and that sort of thing, so I had to post content, but it's highly effective for me if at all possible in November, I schedule social media, just meaning that I, when I take breaks from writing, I don't pick up my phone and go on Instagram because there's just so much that can bombard us in such a short period of time. And the more brain space we allow all of those things to take up, the more story space we're giving away. When I did that face-to-face -face video, I just talked about how there's so many things that we can see in such a short time span on social media that can bring with it a range of emotions and feelings and distractions. So for me, it works best if I can set aside a time and brain space where I know that I'm going to be on social media and I can go into it just being happy for the NaNoWriMo superheroes who have won already and we're 12 days in or someone who's way ahead or the news and advertisements and all of those things. I just schedule the social media so that I can clear my mind and not have that interrupting any of my story making. Even if you can only do it on weekdays or a couple of days, it works great. It's amazing. I promise you guys it makes a world of difference. So it's a pretty basic schedule from there. Um, I did also write for my nightly routine um, walking and words. So basically what that is is just going for a walk to kind of reinvigorate myself and get a second wind for the day, um, whether it's outside if the weather permits or on the treadmill, and just thinking about my story, maybe taking my playlist with me, that sort of thing, and then kind of brainstorming. And um, my brain works differently when I'm able to walk away but still stay in my story, and that also makes a big difference as well. Just something if you want to give it a try um, or throw it out. Doesn't hurt me either way. <laughs> So moving right along, I haven't made any changes to this vision board really quickly. Here is a small playlist. Um, obviously, I'm going to have more than this, but this is just what I talked about. My playlist to kind of reignite the fire for writing and reinvigorate me and motivate me. This is not the playlist for my story. This is just something separate with songs that I like that kind of build me up and make me feel motivated again. My self-love, self-care, I just wrote down a few things that will also reinvigorate me and help me step away, but also bring joy so that I can come back to the writing again. Then we have the meal plans. I did write down a few things because I think what I'm going to give a try for a while at least is to have a plan but not be like super stuck on it. Just get the ingredients for a variety of things and then um, make the meals that I have written down. It doesn't have to necessarily be on those specific days of the week. Just a plan for the week and if I shuffle things then so be it. But hopefully my Preptober plans will have gone well and I will already have some food prepared and frozen ahead of time for this to work out effectively. Then I quickly added a snack list, just some things to make healthier choices. In the past I've eaten like crap and then in turn written like crap, so I want to make better healthier choices. That's not to say I'm not going to have a treat, but just some ideas. Okay, and so now we're going to go into the actual writing portion, and I'm going to answer some of those questions that some of you guys had, and then talk to you about one of my NaNoWriMo writing methods. So here's just my little vision board that I did. I covered my title, and there's a little photo behind here that matches my title, but just, just some visualization inspiration for my story. And then we have the plot point passage. This is what some of you had some questions about. So I got the idea to create plot point passage stickers in my planner as my reward system for NaNoWriMo, 
for a number of reasons. So I'm going in as sort of a NaNoWriMo rebel. I do have a story mostly plotted out and around 10,000 words of that. So instead of just doing a reward system for when I reach a certain word count, I thought I would reward myself with small things like going out for Dutch Bros or something like that. Reward myself once I reach one of these points in my story. And I got this idea from Dan Wells' seven-point story structure. If you have not heard of it, it's incredible. I did print it out and stick it right here for you guys to take a look at, but I will cover it really quick. So Dan Wells, as some of you may know, is an author and a podcaster and just a brilliant mind and someone I respect and admire. And quite a few years ago now, he came up with this idea for the seven point story structure that he was inspired by from a Star Trek RPG, sort of like guidebook or rule book. And he kind of developed that for novels. And it's basically this story structure that has the hook, plot turn one, pinch one, midpoint, pinch two, plot turn two, and resolution. Now, the reason that I only have five over here and not seven is because I have mostly strongly developed and written out the first two in my manuscript. So I'm going to be taking those mostly completed into my NaNoWriMo writing. And I feel like it would be kind of cheating if I rewarded myself for those because they're going to be completed almost immediately upon doing NaNoWriMo. So it's it's the general like important points in your story, the hook, the compelling introduction or intriguing world. Um, or the story's intriguing world or characters. Plot turn one is the inciting incident. Then you have your pinch point where the stakes are raised. The midpoint is the turning point in the story where the protagonist goes from reaction to action. Pinch point two is the major conflict takes a turn for the worse, like the darkest night, all hope is lost, that kind of thing. Then plot turn two, the protagonist discovers something that will help them resolve the major conflict or defeat the antagonist. And then resolution, the major conflict is resolved and the antagonist is defeated. Or at least seemingly, if you're writing a series. Um, Dan Wells did do a writing excuses podcast. It is a, it's a writing kind of author discussion podcast. They have just like little bites of helpful information. I think each one of them are about 15 minutes and Dan does them himself with some other writers as well. And he did go over this and he used Harry Potter as an incredible example to kind of lay it out for you and get a good understanding of it. So if I can find it, I will link it down in the description below. It is a couple of years old, but if you just search writing excuses, seven point story structure, you might be able to find it as well if you don't find it down in my description. Now in that podcast, one of his author friends that was speaking with him talked about him using Harry Potter as an example for this and saying, okay, but what about this moment and that moment and this thing and that thing? There's a lot more that happens in Harry Potter and not just these. There's like side story and major moments and things like that as well. And Dan did talk about those things and touch on those things. But this is a great, I think, start for NaNoWriMo. Um, for 50,000 words, if we're writing young adult or adult novels, then of course we're going to need 50, more than 50,000 words to have a fully developed story. But for the 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo, I think this is great. I think just using these and trying to hit these points in the story or at least develop them a little bit is a really incredible wonderful place to start. Now, if you are going into NaNoWriMo undecided on your project and you're just going in with a blank page and kind of flying by the seat of your pants, I don't recommend trying to get this in. I feel like it may be a point of contention and stress and anxiety for a lot of people. This I feel like would work better. If you want to, go ahead. If you feel like that's totally your jam and you can pull it off, awesome. I feel like this would probably work better for someone who has some outlining done and a plot that's a little bit stable at least and some characters and world, things like that. Don't pressure yourself to do this if you're flying by the seat of your pants. 
So the point of my stickers, like I said, I am going to mark where and when I reach each of these points in my NaNoWriMo project. I'm going to write in here the word count at which point I reached them and then what reward I'm going to give myself for writing them out. Because I am going into NaNoWriMo with a story idea that's fairly well fleshed out and some character development and world building and those sort of things, I do want to come away from NaNoWriMo with hopefully a fairly strong and good quality draft. So I really would like to reach these points and get them all written out. And then once I do, it's a small reward for me, like Dutch Bros or some stationery, which are both of my addictions. So, <laughs> so hopefully that answers the questions for you guys. Again, definitely search Dan Wells' seven point story structure, all the podcasts and information that he did on it. It's incredibly helpful. And of course, nobody explains it quite as well as the creator himself. Um, and then also there are videos, I do believe they're a number of years old, but they are up on YouTube that somebody else recorded of Dan giving a small lecture to an audience on the seven point story structure as well. So if you can find those, definitely check them out. Okay, and now we are going to go into one of my NaNoWriMo writing methods. This method is something that I personally developed myself and it is incredibly helpful. And every year that I have used it, I've won NaNoWriMo. And it's the 50 questions method, or as I affectionately like to call it, Bones for Edgar. And if you have seen the Men in Black movie, it's amazing. I highly recommend it if you haven't. But if you've seen the Men in Black movie, then you know what I'm talking about. Bones for Edgar, meaning our stories are just skin suits until we fill them up with the words that are bones, metaphorically speaking obviously. <laughs> okay, so the 50 questions method, what is it? Basically, it's a who, what, when, where, and why of our stories. So our stories are mysteries that we have to solve for ourselves, whether or not they're actual mystery novels. We have to have an understanding and figure things out to have a fully developed plot, fully developed characters, setting, world building, magic systems, whatever it may be, we need to solve that mystery. And so asking ourselves the who, what, when, where, and why questions of those things are, one, going to help us develop really good stories, but also, and very importantly, contribute to our NaNoWriMo word count. So I came up with and developed this concept for myself during a NaNoWriMo a few years ago where I was just starting to feel stuck and frantic about my word count. I was nearing the end. I was way behind. So I just grabbed a notebook and I wrote out 50 questions because there's 50,000 words. So I thought if I could answer 50 questions for myself about this story, then I could add to my word count. So I just frantically started writing in my notebook the who, what, when, where, and why of my story. Now, I personally consider this to be a story building and story adapting method, growing on that story and the characters and the world building and the backstory and all of those things. I don't consider this like a game to play or an activity. I do know that sometimes NaNoWriMo on social media will throw out these kind of like side adventure things to help people build up their word count and they'll throw out prompts and say things like, now imagine a UFO landed in the middle of your story. How do your characters react? That sort of thing. Those are great. I have done some of those in the past. But for this, when I'm using this, I stick to my story. I stick to my characters and my world and my magic system and all of those things. And I try to not veer off because it's a super important to me to use it effectively to just further develop what I'm already writing and working on. So to make this beneficial for NaNoWriMo and to add to my word count, I write questions down on paper and then I scroll to the bottom of my document or if there's already a space in the story where it's appropriately fitting, I'll answer that question within my Word document. 
So let me give you an example. Let's say you are writing a story that is a magical sci-fi fantasy and you have a magic system in your story that deals with flowers. So you would ask yourself the who, what, when, where, and why questions of that flower magical system. Like every different type of flower has magic powers. Every petal has magic powder. Every different color has some sort of magical offering for your characters. So you could say, who first discovered that the flowers have magical powers or who bestowed this power or capability onto the world? Uh, when did this happen? What year? What century? Whatever is relevant to your world. Where? Where was this discovered? Or where do these flowers grow? Like if they're magical, are they growing out of a rock cliffside high above the ocean and people risk life and limb to go and gather them? That sort of thing. Who, what, when, where, and why of literally every aspect of your story. And then once you answer those questions for yourself, you take that back to your Word document and answer them within there and it builds on your word count. Now, let's say you don't have a story with any magic or sci-fi or fantasy or anything like that. Let's say you are writing a romance. You can still do who, what, when, where, and why questions for everything in your romance novel, from your characters to your setting to the side characters and the locations and all of those things. Let's say your love interests um, work together at some specific building. Let's say they're, they work together at a library and the library is going to be demolished and they are one, the, the male wants it torn down, the female is fighting to save it or, you know, which, whichever sexes you're using as your love interest. I'm just giving an example here. But let's say one of them wants it torn down, one of them wants to save the library you can fully develop the library. Who built it? When was it built? Where was it built? Why was it built? Why? What's what's the justification to have it torn down? Play devil's advocate with your own characters. What's the good justification for tearing it down? What's the good justification for keeping it up and fighting for it? All of those things. Do a who, what, when, where, and why of them and take them back to your Word document. It's going to build on your Word count. I wanted to share this with you guys ahead of time so that if you already know what your story is going to be or the outline or the characters, even a little bit, you could do 50 questions now and take them into NaNoWriMo with you. I personally tend to not reach for this until I'm feeling stuck. So I'll write out my 50 questions and I'll save this for the hard days or when we're getting towards the end. And if I'm a little bit behind, then I will answer as many of the questions as possible. Now you can go above and beyond 50. If you sit down and start to write these out and you have so many questions about your story and your world and your characters and all of those things, keep going. It will do nothing but help you and add to your word count. You could also do this when you reach your 1000 word mark or that 1667 for the day. If you hit your word count goal and you're like, I just want to do a little bit more. I just want to be able to squeak out a few more words. You could finish your word count requirement for the day and then come to these pages and answer a couple of the questions. It's also really great. It's it's a little bit extra, but it's really great if you could keep these in chronicle chronicle Oh my gosh. A chronological, I write, I don't speak, chronological order to your story. Um, so like beginning, middle, and end, maybe not chapter by chapter, but at least where they would be brought up in your story. And that way you can mark it off as you go, as you're moving through the story and answer them in order as it pertains. Hopefully that all makes sense. But you guys, if you have any questions at all, or if you want more information about bones for Edgar. I would be more than happy to help you out with that and catch up with you down in the comments below. So 
that's all for the planner. That is my method of writing. Let me know what you guys are doing. If you have any special things that you take with you into NaNoWriMo to develop the story or add to the word count, totally let me know. We could all share with each other down in the comments and help each other out. Another thing really quick before we go, I am, like I said, going to be sharing NaNoWriMo content with you guys this year and letting you know as I progress along and whether or not I win. But before then, at the end of October, starting October 25th, to the 31st Halloween, I am going to be posting a video every single day with lots of fun things. This is going to be, it's my second year doing Oh Really Ween, but this is going to be the first year where I actually share some of my writing with you guys. I am terrified, but I hope you will hang out and join me. And then on Halloween, it's going to have some extra fun content and I will be doing a giveaway. So I invite you to hang out with me for that as well. But you guys, that's going to be all for this one. I will see you in my next one. Tell your dog I said hi. Bye, guys.